Hello everyone, so we are back again here with another episode of the Heartbeat of Sri Lanka. Now this time we have a small difference because we have with us a very young entrepreneur who has revolutionized the restaurant management industry in the country. We have with us the CEO and co-founder of Omac Technologies who is also hailing from a generation of entrepreneurs. Mr. Ehant Sirsena. Hi. How are you? How are you? Good. Thank you. I'm going to start off with a very basic question. To what do you owe your success? I think it's also, I mean, a, a few things I would say is, uh, I mean, predominantly a family background, I think, being uh, surrounded by entrepreneurs led me down that path of, or wanted me to explore the path of being an entrepreneur myself. Uh, but I would say it's also my background and you know, work, school, uh, and also the, you know, the people who have met along the way. Uh, I mean, I can't uh, thank enough for the team that I have. Uh, I mean, these guys, are, you know, without them, I would be absolutely nothing. So, I mean, I, I, there's so many factors in, in what I would say is, uh, you know, which results in, in my success. Now, uh, we'll start off with your school days. Uh, you went to school at Colombo International School. After that, uh, you graduated in 2000, and uh, you went for your uh, degree in uh, United Kingdom. So now, after you went to university, was where did you find the inspiration to start something like this? Was it at university? Was it at school? Or was it during masters? Well, I mean, um, what we did was, I mean, when I once I graduated, I actually wanted to work at multiple companies. So I, I spent uh, you know, two, two and a half years at Vertusa and another company called Nadastra, uh, where we did uh, management consultancy work for the US. Uh, but something that, uh, you know, then I moved into a family business, uh, you know, at which point uh, you know, it was in garments and I was supporting my mother in, in, in taking that forward. Uh, but something about you know, IT, and I always wanted to be in IT, and that was uh, you know, some chord that struck right through. Uh, so we basically started uh, the IT company with uh, focus on actually doing everything and anything. So we uh, developed websites, we developed mobile apps, uh, you know, ev everything that you can find. Uh, so as part of one of the products that we did was you know, we uh, moved into the restaurant management field. So with that and our first customers that we got on board, we were absolutely able to scale this. And that's at at the point when more and more customers start joining our platform is when we thought we would really focus on, on, on taking this uh, part of our business forward. Uh, as a secondary option, we also do have mobile app development, which we do, for example, Commercial Bank is our biggest customer to date. And we were able to, as a young company, you know, we were only two years uh, old at the time. Uh, they believed in us and gave us opportunity to develop their whole mobile banking platform. So these are the two areas that we focus on. Um, and, and you know, if I go back to where this inspiration came from, I think it obviously stems from the parents and, and family. So, you know, like you said earlier, I mean, my father's an entrepreneur, my mother is, uh, both my grandparents, uh, grandfathers were. So I think that background uh, just, you know, pushes you in, a, in the direction of entrepreneurship per se. So, and that will, you know, hopefully, but um, I have a small question, clarification rather. Some, uh, someone uh, hailing from a background such as yours, I mean, your grandfather uh, st started up MD Gunasen bookshops and then your mother is uh, part of the family that owns uh, Mount Lavinia Hotel Group, other hotels as well. I mean, coming from such a background, it's very rare that we see the son taking a different path or rather starting up his own thing rather than trying to continue the family business. I mean, what made you do the change? I mean, because we see in most other families what happens is when there is a family business running, the son or the daughter would carry on the family business rather than starting his or her new own thing. So I think one, one was that these businesses were established and you know, running on its own. Uh, when it comes to the hotel business, it's uh, run by my uncle, and you know it's a very successful business there. So there was no need for a third generation to get involved in that business. Uh, you know, when it came to the bookshops and printing and stuff, 
my father is a professional printer, so you know, I, it's not, I can't really contribute to that uh, element of it. So what I had was on, you know, that with all the experience that I gained through uni and especially working at Batusa and places like that, uh, and companies like that, was to focus on the IT industry. Uh, and what we wanted to do was to build a product-based company from Sri Lanka, focusing on Asia. So it wasn't a US-focused uh, business or anything like that. So we wanted to purely focus on the Asian region. And I think because there was so much of stability you know, in, the, in the framework or, or family framework, it actually helped me to go on my own and do my own thing. So you know, that's, that's where it uh, came to. Uh, so, growing up in a family of entrepreneurs, uh, do you, did you have any brothers or sisters, or was it just you? I have a sister, uh, who's also in entrepreneurship at the moment, so right. she's uh, working with uh, the stationery shop called Full Stop, right. uh, based in Crescat, uh, so she's handling that business, uh, again, a family business, which she uh, actually took on from my aunt. So, uh, it's, it's, I think, I mean, I think we can do a separate episode on your family, <laughs> only separate segment, rather. Uh, on entrepreneurship, yes, I guess you can. <laughs> I mean, uh, growing up in such a background, I mean, unlike most other entrepreneurs we find, you, you went to uh, CIS, you grew up in a family where you basically had everything you wanted. How was it for you? How was it, how was your childhood days? It must have been extremely, uh, I won't say easy, but then again, not so hard when compared to uh, others, if you take. Well, I mean, I, I guess, yeah, you can say that. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, one, something that let, uh, allowed me to do was also focus on sports. So, uh, you know, even at CIS, even though the, you know, it wasn't a very uh, mature sports culture, we used to spend a lot of time playing cricket and then, you know, badminton and all these other sports, uh, which I think develops a whole load of other skills, which are, I think, essential when it comes to actually, uh, you know, at the end running a business. Uh, at the end, you're managing people. So you have a vision, you have a strategy, uh, and that all is executed through the management of people. Uh, and and these, these skills are something that, you know, I, I think even from a school day, so you, I mean, you can go to school and you can come back, you can study, you can be the best person at, you know, with all, all A's or whatever you want to call it. I wasn't anywhere like that, but, uh, you know, uh, it, it was more of actually developing these soft skills that, you know, at the end helped me in, in a sense of, uh, you know, running or, or, you know, working with people. And uh, I think that's a skill that is essential that you learn as a student or when you're in school. Uh, because what you carry forward are your friends and these little soft skills. Because you know, between school and uni, there is such a big difference. I mean, what you learn in uni, you never, or you may use only about five percent of that when you come into actual, actual business. Uh, but you use, you know, ninety to almost hundred percent of these soft skills that you develop uh, while being at school and even at uni, making new friends and things like that. So, I mean, that's something that. I always try to encourage, uh, you know, uh, young people who are coming out, or I can't call it young, but at least students who are in school, uh, try to tell them is to develop that component of it, and that's critical for it. I mean, when you wanted to start uh, your own company, you knew there were other restaurant management systems that did exist in the country as well and everywhere in the world. How did you think that your idea would surpass everything else and will revolutionize the industry itself. So something that we focused on at the, you know, at the time uh, when we launched uh, in 2012 uh, was that uh, software as a service or SaaS based uh, cloud uh, restaurant management systems was still in its inception uh, or there were not many companies who were playing in that domain. So that's something that that area is one thing that we you know set about starting, uh, and and we were one of the first people to offer uh, a restaurant management system on a monthly rental, and that changed our game. So people were able to quickly adapt to our system. Uh, there was no cost per se for them to uh, you know incur. 
to come onto our platform. Uh, and then that was what changed initially. But since then, what we did was we uh, focused on a few areas which uh, we find our competitors, especially in the US, don't really focus on. Uh, so one area is, uh, let's say, you know, your uh, inventory management, which is your back office operation. Uh, that component is not, fo not truly focused in a, a system that comes from the US. Because in the US, you focus on sales optimizations and things like that. But in Asia, uh, with the typical uh, person who works in a restaurant, uh, you know, not the most uh, you know, uh, educated or anything like that, uh, you know, it's it needed a focus on actually putting in controls to ensure that you know, things like you know, pilferage, uh, operational optimization, things weren't going to waste. So those are the areas that we focused on as a company. So our restaurant management system is actually very heavily focused on the ERP level tracking of purchasing and inventory and things like that. So that was our core differentiator from most US-based solutions. And, and that's why we have focused it on Asia, is because we see this same problem coming up in Indonesia with our customers in Indonesia, or whether we go to Malaysia, India, it's the same set of problems that we're facing. But if you go into the US or you go to maybe Europe, you may not see the same issues in that same depth or uh, you know, uh, at the moment. We live in a world where most of us want to go to university, uh, get a degree, get a job that pays you something that's enough to live and then just live the day-to-day -day life. What made you not go in the same path and you know, thought of going on a different path? I mean, you did work at Virtusa, you did work at uh, a few other companies, and I'm pretty sure you could have gone in that path and probably gone up the hierarchy. But then again, you chose, no, I'm going to start my own thing. What made you think that you could do that even though after you thought of any idea, what gave you the determination, courage to think that you were able of doing that? So they come back again to my parents, I think, you know, having seen them do what they have done, it makes it a lot easier for me also to go down that path. And uh, it's also the known thing, right? Uh, my comfort zone is, is seeing entrepreneurs, right? So. It, it's, there in, it's there in you, it's, maybe it's at the back of your mind, but it's something that always lives in you. So, uh, you know, there was a point where I always wanted to start, a, start my own company. Uh, and that was something I guess was ingrained from me when I was like, you know, maybe 16, 17. In what and, you know, what industry, I don't think that had been really, uh, you know, uh, uh, focused on. Uh, but that kind of grew as soon as, as uh, more and more, and you when know, I went into working at other companies. Uh, well, I mean, I think it's a matter of asking yourself: uh, Do you want to do something different, or do you want to do your day-to-day -day job? Uh, I think even in Sri Lanka at that time, I mean, if you take four years or five years ago, uh, the IT industry was very much focused on services. So, like you know, we were trying to work for companies in the U.S. having an offshore. Uh, uh, development center and things like that. Uh, and there was not much focus on product. Uh, but since then, of course, it has completely changed. I mean, now we have investors who focus or ensure that your company you know, works on product based and things like that. And you have companies that have gone global, right? I mean, Uber or you know, any of these other major companies, Airbnb. I mean, it's a simple app. Uh, you know, that literally, yeah, absolutely, Revol revolutionized the world, or, or how you know you book a cab or you book a hotel or you book a room. So, I mean, those were also things that inspire you know, as a entrepreneur or a young entrepreneur, it, uh, you know, or a young employee, you kind of look at these and go, oh, "Wow, if they can do it, why can't you?" <laughs> Uh, so those are areas that really helped, I mean, in the last few months, if you take, I mean, the deal sizes are now, I mean, you know, in the billions of dollars kind of valuation. Yeah. Elon Musk, Tesla, you know, how they, these guys have kind of got, you know, and, and the ability with Facebook and things to get all this information coming to you. I mean, I think 
in the future, you'll see more entrepreneurs uh, or people who are trying to start their own business then and trying to work. Because you can build your own culture, you can you know, build your own um, ethos, ethos around how you work. So that, that's, I think, you know, uh, uh, bottom line of it, I mean, in the sense of saying, yeah, I guess, you know, it was nice to work at companies as well. You got your, you know, stable job, stable salary. Uh, but it's also about kind of thinking out of the box, uh, doing what you want. Uh, and that's, I think, where it lies. Yeah, um, you told me in your earlier answer that, you know, what helped you most in life is not what, not what you learned and it was just 5% or 10% and it was more the connections you made and more the soft skills that you uh, practiced throughout your school life and your uni life. But then again, we see in Sri Lanka today, I mean, everyone is so busy trying to get through A-levels with flying colors, trying to become the first in class. I mean, we see so many kids not doing any sports, not doing any extracurricular activities. I mean, they're just doing what's there on the book, trying to learn the book, going to classes in the morning and then again in the evening. What do you think about this? What is what is your message to these youngsters? Well, I mean, that's uh, uh, in Sri Lanka, you got to do those things to satisfy your parents. But it's also your backup plan, which makes sense. I mean, you need to always have a plan B uh, in case, you know, what, what you originally want to do or achieve doesn't go exactly to how you want. Uh, because now, I mean, if you take business at the moment, I mean, you know, you have startups that, you know, you last only for three months. Some may even go for you know one year and then it just just dies. A good example is Yahoo at the moment, right? Uh, they were valued at almost you know ten or twenty times more than what they were purchased recently at, uh, or they sold themselves at. So I mean, it, it's so fast moving. So you have to have that option of being able to go and work for somebody else too. So I, I mean, I'm not. It's not a bad thing. Uh, I think it's it's a good thing to go through the whole schooling cycle and you know go through, do your de get your degrees, get your qualifications. I, I did the same thing, uh, but I think it's it's about. I mean, when you look at the skills that you actually use, just not all of that gets used. What all of what you learn gets used when you come out into the you know after you finished a degree. Uh, but it's always important to have your CV and things growing. So what I would say is like while you do study and I think I recommend is to do your sports and you know be a part of this whole, you know. But I think that life, uh, you know, is something that you need to enjoy when you're in school because you can't do that once you're out of it. Um, I mean, you know, take an example of the Royal Thomian, you know, if you're a royalist. Uh, you know, it, it, it becomes a culture. You you. You know, more than you spending of that, you know, few days in while you're at school, when you grow up and when you have your friends and when you, you know, uh, when all of them come down to Sri Lanka to, you know, spend those three days, it's it's more of a lifestyle and you know. It's a, it's a, it's a it's, whole different world exactly. inside there itself. Exactly. So, would you gain that by just studying for your exams? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I think it's about a matter of interacting and being able to, you know, uh, uh, have fun in, in school. And in, it's, it's mostly about the connections you make with other people because, I, I, as you said earlier, it's the connections that you've made throughout your life that's helped you Absolutely. get this far because... And uh, moving on now, you started a business based on technology. And what we see is, as you also mentioned earlier, businesses based on technology always have, they can just die down in, in a second. Why did you want to go ahead with something based on technology rather than uh, now taking all of your other family members, including your sister? They, they started very traditional businesses rather from bookshops to hotel business. They're very traditional businesses. Why did you want to change the comfort zone? Uh, so being in tech, uh, studying electrical and electronic engineering, you know, you always want to build stuff, and you know, you, uh, you know, technology things like uh, you know the old uh, 
flip phones that you got from Motorola and stuff like that. I mean, those were things that inspired you to yeah, want to. Yeah, I remember to, back in the day. Yeah, uh, those flip phones were like the iPhone nowadays. Exactly. Everyone, you know, if you if you had it, you were like absolutely. You're the cool kid, yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, and even in the movies, you know, they used to pick it yeah. up and then answer. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, from that, I, I, could, I guess it was all comfort zone. So, you know, I mean, that's what I was, you know, I, I knew that's what I wanted to do, I guess, you know, through, again, being comfortable with it. Uh, and, and that's, I think, the, the core reason, I would say, to why I chose tech. Uh, the volatility of tech, I didn't understand until I got into it, uh, you know, in a lot more uh, depth. Uh, you know, you don't realize how quickly these things, you know, either can, you know, yeah. Go go up or go down. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a fine line between you know being uh, being successful in tech and uh, you know being a startup that shut down in tech. So <laughs> it's a it's a very interesting area to be in because of the fast pace. I mean, you can't. You just need to be up in the game every second. You just need to put do something new, something Absolutely. to catch the Absolutely. readers. And you're competing, uh, you, you can be a Sri Lankan startup, but you're now competing in a global Google. context. So, you know, you have uh, maybe another 10 companies in India that are trying to do the same thing you're doing. But, uh, you know, those guys are working 18, 20 hours a day. Whereas, you know, in Sri Lanka, we, you know, tend to work more 10 to, you know, 12 hours a day. So these are things that, you know, where it's, it, to, to give that drive and stuff. I mean, I think only in tech you get that. I mean, you can be quite, comfortable in other businesses. I mean, even restaurant business, I see so many good restaurants uh, in Sri Lanka. I mean, we're doing extremely well. Uh, but it's always the ones who innovate or do something different who always stand out, even in that, even in the restaurant space. Uh, like you have the Michelin stars or anything like that. So even in tech, you've got to be, you're going to be outthink competition, you know, and, and that is the most important thing. And, and that buzz, uh, I don't think any other industry gives you that buzz to that level. Uh, because you, know, you can see things. If it's the hotel industry, you know your competition three years before they actually get there because uh, you, know, you, you have to build the hotel from ground up. Yeah. Uh, whereas here, you, tomorrow a new app can come and kill you, literally. So I guess it adds to both sides. It can be stressful, it can be uh, you know, uh, exciting. Uh, to wrap things up rather, what would your message be to all of the youngsters watching us, to anyone watching us rather who, in, I, who want to be entrepreneurs, who are, are inspired by people like you, what's your message to them? So I would say is entrepreneurship, there are a few things that are given. Uh, one is your stress and uh, you know, the responsibility that comes with it. And, and that's something that you've got to take as a given. You gotta just lock that aside and, and only think of it in the time that you know, you're at home or maybe you know, you're trying to come up with a new strategy. Uh, but otherwise, other than that, I mean, I think uh, the excitement, uh, you've got to have that. So if, you, if you're trying to do a product-based thing, you've got to have a passion for that product. So you know, I think build that passion. Uh, you know, you've got to uh, know what drives you, uh, and if it, if you, if you enjoy it, uh, that's when you have, uh, you know, uh, you know. I guess it's uh, better than partying or something like that. You know, the excitement that you get from, uh, you know, having that passion in what you know, seeing it evolve and build, uh, whether it's a, you know, team that you take forward or a company. I mean, when you see it grow, uh, and you know, even for us, I mean, when we started, we were focused on Sri Lanka. Uh, now we are moving our company out to Singapore, right. moving it into the region. I mean, that excitement that you have, you can't express it unless you're an entrepreneur and trying to do that. So I think if you uh, kind of put the hardships aside, uh, like I said, entrepreneurship is it's given. Those are, every entrepreneur goes through that but enjoy the upside and enjoy the excitement that you can build. Uh, and, and I would say is that, I mean, at the end, it's, it's all about the fun that you're going to have. If, if you're not going to have fun in entrepreneurship, I would say don't do it. 
because uh, you, you will have more fun working for another company. Uh, but then again, everyone likes to be their own boss. But at the end of the day, there is a lot of commitment and sacrifice that you have to put into all of that. Correct. I mean, uh, working you know, 12 to 16 hour, hour days is a given. Uh, but at the end, you, you know, when, you, when I've seen how OMAC has grown over the last few years and the, the team that, uh, again, I come back to the team, and the team that we have uh, gained or, or joined us or been part of this journey uh, has made it ever so rewarding, even though you know, some days you're wondering you know, when your next, you know, who, which customer is going to pay you next or who is not going to pay you next. And you know, all these are there at the back of your mind. But uh, I think at the, you know, you've got to enjoy it and you've got to have fun. Um, and you know, that's what we try to do. Try to make every day fun for everybody who works uh, at OMAC and um, you know, try to leverage that same uh, enjoyment when you come home and you know, spend time with your family. Amazing story. Thank you very much for your time and thank you for sharing your story with us and all our viewers. So, think it thanks was, a lot. So, it was a great pleasure to be on this show. It was a pleasure for us. So, that's it for today, and we will join you in two more weeks with another episode of Heartbeat of Sri Lanka.